Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Rotax reveals 24 volt option for 915 IS. Also, Santa Clara County Airport safety issues get FAA scrutiny. And finally, James Webb Space Telescope is on its way to discovery. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. Rotax reveals 24 volt option for 915 IS. Rotax unveiled another option for its range of light aircraft engines with a 24 volt option of its 915 IS. The change will provide pilots with a wide range of opportunities to upgrade their cockpits and flying experience without added engine weight. The new 915 IS C24 enables aircraft to operate 24 volt aircraft board systems, digital displays, glass cockpits, and reserves for auxiliary instruments, tablets, and gadgets. Fancy big screen panels are a popular change on the flight deck, but support for portable accoutrements is exciting to a general aviation population that has become enthralled by their multifunction devices. The electronic flight bag has become an invaluable, near essential part of hassle free light aircraft pilotage. Trinkets have, however, brought some difficulties. Maintaining a tablet's power level while set to a max brightness is a dedicated battery drainer that has resulted in some less than elegant clutches in the cockpit, with cables and backup packs strewn about many a cramped cockpit. The addition of an ultralight 24 volt converter now allows the power supply to deliver up to 800 watts, able to power a suite of fancy modern gadgetry. The 915 series is available in certified and uncertified versions, with installations nearly unlimited between off the shelf, experimental, and home built aircraft. After the break, Easy Up Inspection Covers replaces troublesome parts. More news when we come back. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon Fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link Hand Control Unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the Record Out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back with us. So much news coming out of the aviation industry. We're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Easy up inspection covers replaces troublesome parts. Marty Harris, a lifetime owner of Classic Fabric Aircraft, has tackled a long-standing hassle of ownership and inspection. Riveted inspection covers. Pilots and mechanics alike working on fabric aircraft have been waiting 90 years for an easier and less damaging way to remove and install inspection covers, said Harris. The FAA approved assembly kit is available for new applications or existing covers on experimental and light sport aircraft with fabric skins. The A&P mechanic sign-off may be used to replace troublesome inspection covers on certified aircraft as per advisory circular 43.13.1. GE completes Phase 1 on XA100 engine. GE has completed the initial phase of testing on its XA100 adaptive cycle engine made under the U.S. Air Force's Adaptive Engine Transition Program. The development process on the groundbreaking engine is hoped to lead the way to a replacement engine for the F-35A, F-35C without requiring any structural modifications to either aircraft. 
The re-engine should grant the fighters better range, acceleration, and cooling to accommodate next-gen mission systems. USAF says they denied 2,000 COVID exemption requests. The COVID vaccination saga continues in the armed forces, with the notice that the USAF and Space Force commands have turned down thousands of requests for religious exemptions to the vax mandate while approving none. The service feels that none of them have shown an honest, consistent religious attitude toward the vaccine. Those denied may still appeal the decision up to the chain to the Surgeon General of the Air Force. Boeing and Airbus urge 5G rollout delay. Boeing and Airbus have both announced their position on the impending rollout of 5G cell phone networks, maintaining that an upgrade could see interference in vital aircraft operations. The theoretical overlap between frequencies could see errors using radar altimetry. While their launch in mid-December was postponed by the larger telecom companies, it was merely delayed by a month. Boeing chief executive Dave Calhoun and Airbus America CEO Jeffrey Niddle have joined the chorus of industry stakeholders worried about the effects of the 5G towers on nearby aerial navigation procedures. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's return to the rest of the news. Santa Clara County Airport safety issues get FAA scrutiny. In a strongly worded letter to Santa Clara County's leadership, the FAA is investigating the county's ongoing airport safety issues, including its rushed ban on 100 low lead fuel as of January 1st of next year, as it considers possible violations of federal law. Aviation groups, as well as local pilots and businesses, have shown that the ban carries significant safety risk, as it does not provide a safe transition to unleaded fuel. In the letter, the FAA strongly recommends that the county take action to suspend the effective date on its ban on leaded gas as the county-owned airports until this matter can be resolved. Since the FAA has received multiple complaints from airport tenants and users, along with a group representing industry stakeholders who allege violations of grant assurances at Reed Hillview Airport and St. Martin Airport, the agency is commencing an investigation under 14 CFR Part 13. The FAA has also shortened the response time for the county to 20 days, as it does so when circumstances require expedited handling of a particular case or controversy. This step by the FAA also follows a call by GA groups to mitigate Santa Clara County's ban on 100 low lead fuel sales at the county's airports as of January 1st. After these messages, James Webb Space Telescope, it's on its way to discovery. Those details after the break. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher, or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Skyleader Aircraft offers a lineup of the most powerful, durable, and efficient light sport aircraft in the industry. From trainers to roomy cockpits for long hauls, Skyleader has an aircraft for you. And the best part? They're in your budget. Skyleader's base prices are set low to give you room to customize your aircraft to your needs, desires, and wallet, allowing you to put your money where it matters to you most. Visit FlySkyLeader.com today to learn about our aircraft, customization options, and chat with the team. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. Welcome back. Finally, James Webb Space Telescope, it's on its way to discovery. NASA's James Webb Telescope launched at 7.20 in the morning, Eastern Time Saturday, on an Ariane 5 rocket from Europe's spaceport in French Guiana, South America. 
a joint effort with ESA and the Canadian Space Agency, the Webb Observatory is NASA's revolutionary flagship mission to seek the light from the first galaxies in the early universe and to explore our own solar system as well as planets orbiting other stars called exoplanets. Ground teams began receiving telemetry data from Webb about five minutes after launch. The Ariane Space Ariane 5 rocket performed as expected, separating from the observatory 27 minutes into flight. The observatory was released at an altitude of approximately 75 miles. Approximately 30 minutes after launch, Webb unfolded its solar array and mission managers confirmed that the solar array was providing power to the observatory. After solar array deployment, mission operators established a communications link with the observatory via the Malindi Ground Station in Kenya and Grand Control at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore sent the first commands to the spacecraft. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.